Thank you, sir. You're good. I'm good. You're good. Congratulations, Coach. Our men undefeated on the season. Take us through uh, a hard fought win for the Flames. It's never boring, is it? So, uh, one, I want, you want to give credit, I think, to uh, Middle Tennessee. They played a heavy game. They came and obviously took it after us. Uh, I shared they were way better than the record, and I think they showed that there. Uh, was it not obviously the cleanest game for us in a lot of, a lot of areas? Uh, here's what I'm proud of, though. Defensively, uh, we stunk for a long time. Uh, but they found a way there in the second half, especially the fourth quarter, when we needed them to make plays. They, they got turnovers, uh, got big plays, and, uh, you know, lived up the way we should play, be playing defense. Proud of them. I thought offensively, you take the turnovers away. We had some, obviously, penalties. I moved up and down the field. There in the fourth quarter, we obviously had a chance to end the game and uh, missed a couple plays where we had, you know, guys open here or there. And so, but uh, you got to win challenging games. You know, you got to take everybody's best shot. And the lesson, you know, we talked all week, all week that uh, you can't allow complacency to step in, you know, and, and we didn't have a great week of practice and it showed up, you know, we played like we didn't have a great week of practice. And fortunately, we were able to find a way to win uh, and continue to move on and, and you know, put ourselves one step closer uh, to, you know, what we want to try to get accomplished with this team. So always proud of the win and no matter how bad it looks, we'll take those uh, ugly W's any day and over a pretty loss. And uh, thankful that we got it done. Our student body was excellent once again there in the, in the Flames quarter. And we were able to take advantage of it. And, uh, got a lot of work to do to clean up, but uh, excited about the win. Talk about that fourth quarter, the Flames quarter, as you dubbed it. 45 total yards allowed in that quarter tonight and no points again. Six points all season long. What is it about the fourth quarter that gets your defense to step up at the right time? Well, I think, I think we need to start it in the first, don't we, probably, because we don't have to worry about it as much. But, you know, you go back to your, one, you go back to your conditioning, you go back to your training. I told you, you know, the team, you, you fall back on your training in times of crisis, right, and your preparation. And so I, I think, you know, we, we emphasize that getting here in the spring, emphasize that the Flames quarter is our quarter uh, and that we have to we have to own that and win that quarter. And, um, you know, so it, one, it's a mentality, and I, and I think, two, especially here at home, you know, you get that don't stop believing going and those flashlights are not flashlights, those phones going and, you know, everybody's getting excited and it's uh, it's an intimidating thing, you know, and I think uh, it's it's a mentality that we've worked hard to, you know, to create and uh, our guys have bought into that. And so we just got to we got to try to make it all up in three quarters too. Big point in the game there, it's third down. They get the stop and then the penalty after that. Tell me about the decision to take the shot at the end zone when Caden's not having his best night throwing the ball, but you and Coach Corn just take me through that dynamic and, and go into the shot play there. Yeah, that was obviously a big call because it was fourth and uh, whatever there, and so you had to make a decision. And then once we once they got the penalty there, um, we hadn't connected on some, and you know, they were begging us to throw the ball. You know, they were begging us, and we did, had missed some of those. You know, whether it was a drop or just missed some. And but but we knew we had that. We knew we had uh, the matchup we wanted. And uh, we thought that was the best time to let it rip. And, uh, you know, he made a nice throw. CJ made a nice route and catch. And obviously that gave us a lead and able to hold on. And then the turnovers tonight playing a big factor again. You end up with one more than they do. You end up with one more score than they do. Yeah, I mean, that's the name of the game, right? Getting, getting stops, getting people off the field and, and the turnovers. We obviously uh, created some there. The Port had the interception, the fumble, and, and I can't remember the other one they had. Was it another fumble? Maybe, uh, but ours, you know, ours were the devastating right out of the gate, uh, you know, right out of the gate. I'll tell you all that story one day, right out of the gate. And, uh, and then obviously the fumble there, you know, when we're out of halftime, we get a great stop and we got it. We got a first down and got, you know, big plays there. And so we, uh, the disappointment, we turn it over and we left 14 points off the turnovers. You know, when you turn it over, you hope you hold the field goals. And so uh, we got to stop turning over, but if our defense continue to take the ball away, you know, it gives us a chance to win. But we have to play better if we're going to win any game again. You rush for 400 yards tonight. Caden goes for 160. Seems like that just is a reoccurring theme for this team this season. Yeah, I mean, they, you know, we our, our our whole game plan was, you know, you want to be as balanced as possible. You want to hit your shots. You want to do all those things. But the way they were playing us, especially early, they were they were they were keeping everybody deep and saying we're not going to give up any deep shots. That's what that was their plan from the first half on. 
Uh, and so we just decided, all right, we're going to run it, you know, and, and do some things and still take your, take your chances. Uh, and um, we were able to do that. And, it, and, and when you don't have your best uh, in the other areas, if you can run like that, it still gives you a chance. And that allowed us to stay in the game. Because one, it kept them off the field when we weren't playing good defense. Uh, and we were able to control the ball, control the clock until we could, you know, make it more of a uh, uh, game that we want to try to play. So is the intention to run that many, to have that much of a run versus pass ratio tonight, or did you kind of sense the flow of the game dictated that? No, I, you want to you want to take what they give you. You know, we've had some games where we've thrown it more, and, and but the last couple weeks, the way people have tried to play us because we've hit so many big, you know, shots or our, our, our receivers, some of them are averaging on twenty something yards of catch and all that. They're not. They don't want to give up those. And so, if you're going to play soft, then we're going to try our best to try to run it down your throat and see if we can control the ball. And so that's what a team wants to do to us. We're going to try to do that. Also, you know, you play a team like them that was explosive. You saw that they had a lot of receivers that we had trouble tackling. You want to try to keep them off the field and limit limit uh, the opportunities they have. So it's it's part of trying to win, and uh, we want to we want to try to be as balanced as possible. And if you go back, we met, we dropped a touchdown pass. Uh, we had another one there at the end that barely overthrew Sibley. You know, you, you hit on a couple of those, and you're whatever we had, 400 or something, you're probably 240 thrown. You know, everybody's high fouling me. <clears throat> Coach, that's awesome. Everybody's like, why are you running all so much? Because we won't win. Coach, um, what does it say about your, you mentioned this before, what does it say about your program? You didn't play your best game, but you still got the W. What does that say about your team and your program? Well, I think our, our team's resilient. Uh, obviously, uh, and uh, I think they're buying into what, you know, what we believe in, what we preach. Um, you know, we, we almost learned a Bible lesson. You know, we got really close to that, touching that fire, and it about cost us. And, and, and hopefully, I'm glad we're learning in a win, you know, that we can, that we learn, we have to learn how to practice and not take things for granted. Uh, I told the team last night in, our, in a meeting there that I'm an 80s, I love 80s music. And one of the songs there was, don't know what you got till it's gone, you know. And, uh, and like, I referenced losing, uh, losing an opponent that we were better than because we thought we were better and we didn't prepare. And, and that's where all of our championships came from. And I talk about that is that, man, we're on such a special thing going. Don't take it for granted, you know. But uh, I give credit to them. It's them. They, they show resiliency uh, and they believe in each other. And I think that's we never think we're out of the game, which is good. Uh, and, and hopefully we can continue to do that. Seems like every big defensive play you look up and it's Brylin Green coming up with a, a PBU interception, whatever. Uh, you know how important and how crucial has he been uh, for the team on on defense this season? He's been great. You know, and he went with us in the spring. You know, obviously plays baseball, and then he was he was hurt really hurt his back, so he practiced with us a little bit, but he never really scrimmaged, and so we did a lot of individual. Uh, and so we, you know, we'd obviously heard about him, watched video from last year on him. Uh, and, but for us, it was all going to be brand new. And this spring, or not spring, this fall camp, you know, obviously had a great fall camp. Your pump returner is who you trust the most on your team. And he's our pump returner. We trust him to make great decisions. Obviously, he's back there in, in, the, in center field, you know, which is natural for him because he's been a baseball player. And, and he's always got a knack for the ball when he finds it. And uh, he's, he's, a, he's an all-conference player, you know, no doubt. Coach, uh, with that Billy Lucas touchdown in the second quarter, you had Rick Weaver in there on the lead block. How long had you guys been cooking that up for him to contribute offensively? The Dream Weaver. That's what we call him, the Dream Weaver. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, we, we, uh, we, 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 when did we start practice? I don't know what day it is. So, uh, when did we start? We got back from Jacksonville State on uh, whatever time we started practice from, whatever, day one, whatever that was. Uh, we do short yardage go line. I said like the first one. And so the way they were lining up, they gave it gave us an idea like, hey, we want to run it. It's an ISO play. And uh, Rick is I mean, he's a fire hydrant, right? He walked in here. I wish y'all should actually make him like the player of the end of him, wouldn't <laughs> but walk in here. He's a national champion wrestler for us, strong as an ox, and appreciates everything. And we thought that he's so hard to block on our he's on our show team and stuff. We I mean he can ISO somebody. And if y'all see that play, he knocked that guy. That guy gave everything he got, and Rick didn't move. You know, and it's awesome. <laughs> so I'm, I'm excited for him. I mean, what a think about this. You know, for him, <clears throat> walked on the football team this spring in the trial. You know, made the team, and he probably made teams I didn't know any better. Hey, come on. You know, I was just I was trying to hold on to everybody at that time. Everybody's trying to leave, <laughs> and just just did exactly what you're supposed to do. Worked hard, worked hard. Doesn't say much. He's very soft spoken. And, and then he's became such a, a, a great teammate. Our old line hates him because he goes so hard all the time. But they they were the first ones celebrating for him. 
you know, and, and that's what makes football so special. You know, we get opportunities, and uh, that that young man, no matter what he does, the rest of his time here, he will remember that for the rest of his life. You know, man, how special is that for him? You know, and his family. It's awesome. Don't make me tear up. It's going in motion there. You thought you think about handing it to him the next time, maybe? <laughs> Not yet, man. <laughs> <laughs> one at a time, man. One at a time. Nice to have chunk yardage plays, Coach, but to be as efficient as you were in the red zone, five and five, can you speak to the concerted effort to cash in at that part of the field? That was actually one of our whole keys to the game. You know, we've, been, we've, we've not been great down there as far as getting touchdowns, right? We've, we've scored. I don't know what our percentages are, but uh, that was a huge emphasis because we, we knew, as I said, they're, they're a good team. You know, if you look who they played in their schedule and, and they've scored points and – um, you know, I tell our guys all the time, man, that target, the more you win, that target gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And people can make their season by knocking the flames off. And uh, we needed to score. We needed every one of them. And so that was huge for us. Um, and one thing that we really did emphasize this week of uh, scoring in the red zone, you do it every week. But, like, hey, like, guys, we, we cannot sell for field goals. We cannot do it. And uh, it was it was, uh, it was was great to see something he really emphasized come to fruition. One more from me. The, the penalties tonight, is that a concern or is that just kind of how the game was called tonight on both, end, both ends? It's a major concern. You know, we had uh, we had a block in the back. We had a hole with the hole was just foolish. A block in the back, we'll see what happens. You know, there, I think uh, we're not a, I'll, I need to watch that one. But, you know, we some guy hit somebody late. We get in his face. You know, we get a penalty there. They had an offsetting penalty, which I don't agree with, but I don't agree with any of the calls. And, um, so it is because what it does is it stops momentum and it's undisciplined. And one thing that we pride ourselves on or, or is one of our core values, our core value to our program is being disciplined, you know. And, and when you don't do that, it hurts your team and it shows up. You know, we had a, we had a pass interference penalty and, okay, you got it. All right, they caught pass interference. Well, then we want to talk to their sideline. It's foolish, you know. And so it's just – it's foolish. And uh, we got to get that stop. I have to because I'm responsible for that. And so we'll get that stop starting third minute. All right, one more per question. Coach, when you quitting? No, we got two more. I got on All right, let's go. When you uh, piggybacking off the Brylin Green thing, you've got a uh, good performance from him down the stretch and Singleton, too, guys like that. Um, how much resolve do you think they have down the stretch in tight situations like this to get the, the job done because they've done it several times? Yeah, I, I think it's – I think they uh, – the confidence is high. I think I think when you, when you go do something – and you've done it consistently, you believe you're going to do it every time, right? And uh, it's like when I went and tried to date my wife. And I asked her, you know, hey, let's do this. And she gave me the go ahead. Like, next time I'm asking again, right? Because I'm confident. Same thing. They made it. And, like, now they believe it every time. They want the ball, right? Let it come to me. And I think that shows you, I think, one confidence. And they, they don't get down on themselves if somebody makes a play. Um, and uh, it was huge. That's the resolve they have. And we have to because, you know, you, we put a lot of stuff, stress on that defensive backfield. We're in a lot of man-to-man -man coverage, a lot. And they get tested all the time. And I want to shout out Preston Hodge. Y'all probably didn't know this, but we're down, we're down two corners. We're down two corners that have played a lot of football. Um, and we were getting toasted, to be honest with you. Preston Hodge, who plays a, a nickel whatever for us, we moved him out the corner. He did a fantastic job, so I want to give him a shout-out. Coach Quentin Cooley had 24 carries tonight, and that was by far the most in the running back room. Is that going to be the strategy going forward? Well, right now, you know, we're banged up a little bit there. Obviously, uh, if you watched um, – um, what's his name? I'm, Billy. If you watch Billy, you know, he's still limping around a little bit, not completely healthy. So we're trying to give him a little bit. James Joyner came in and got some carries. He got, he got what, James got seven. But uh, Cooley's the one that, you know, needs to be our workhorse, you know, is, is especially the way people are playing us. And so, um, you know, if that's what we got to do, that's what we're going to have to do. We got, I'd love for him not to have as many. You know, if Billy can get back healthy, we can maybe – you start splitting those a little bit, maybe 64. But James coming in, got some big big carries for us, which was big. Proud of him. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're going to have to just figure it out the way we are with some injuries and some of those. That's, that's just life right now. All right, Coach.